What's going on folks, Perler Dad here again, and in today's video we're going to be doing a plaque of the crow. Let's get to it. First off, we're going to do things a little different by turning the board vertically like so. Now, the photo reference I'm using will be put in the description. It's a good photo, although I felt it needed minor touches, especially since Perler has a few more shades of blacks and grays. So I use this app called Perler Pop to change it up a bit. It's available for iOS and I'm assuming Android as well. But as you can see, it's not really a big change except for the shading and a little more attention to his hair instead of it being a couple of beads here and there. So this app just kind of gave me free liberty to just make certain changes. Now, they are not sponsoring me or I'm being paid to use it, but I do encourage you to take a look at it, especially if you're into this sort of creations with beads. It does have a variety of adding things, changing things, uh, adding photos that you can modify. Take for instance, this uh, Texas uh, that I had in my library that you're able to crop and adjust to make sure it fits your screen. Uh, afterwards, it takes you to a screen where you can decide how many boards you would wish to use uh, to make the design. Just keep in mind, the smaller the boards you choose, the more distorted the figure is going to be versus adding more boards to the picture being a lot clearer. But it does give you an example as to how creativity it'll take you just by using the actual uh, adjustments here. Uh, take, for instance, changing up how many colors you wish to use as well. Um, you can pretty much put down that you want to use maybe about three or four colors or maybe even six colors. And it just gives you a lot of liberty as to how you want to do uh, your actual work. Uh, at the same time, when you're done doing so, you can actually pick which colors you wish to use as well, uh, which ones you would want to substitute, uh, which colors you can actually turn off, turn on. And I just think it's really neat that it can do that. Plus, it'll take you to a section where you can kind of use some paint tools to either use an eyedropper to collect some color so you can start, you know, tweaking up your photo. Uh, at the same time, as you're tweaking it up, you're kind of making it your own because you're fixing it up a bit. And when all that is done, you can pretty much just make the piece look a lot better and you can start working on it. Like so. So I encourage you guys just to check it out and see what you think and make it one of your tools. As always folks, don't forget to follow me on my social media, whether it be on Facebook or on Instagram. The Crow. Where can I begin? There's so much to say about this movie. Growing up in my teens when I first saw it, I absolutely fell in love with it. But then again, who didn't? People today still dress up like him for Halloween from time to time. Even the album was awesome back then. Music like Burn by The Cure. Dead Souls by Nine Inch Nails, I can go on and on. But anyways, The Crow was played by Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, who died while filming. Apparently it took place during the rape scene of Shelley. They had filmed the rest of the movie first, I'm assuming, then they filmed this scene last. But I digress. Basically a gun prop malfunction with a blank shell striking Brandon in the stomach. Even though he was rushed to the hospital, he died on the surgery table. He was only 28 years old. May he rest in peace. Well, the plot of the movie is, well, that rape scene when Eric, played by Brandon, walked in on a gang beating and raping his fiance, who in turn drew their attention to him, ultimately killing him. All this took place on All Hallows Eve, a day before their wedding. So pretty much a year passed and on the anniversary of the murder, a merciful crow brings his spirit back to settle the unfinished business that Eric had on earth, tracking down the gang responsible for the crimes and mercifully killing. 
so many memorable lines in this movie. Like for starters, the one with Tintin. Victims, aren't we all? Or that one scene where the detective and the cop were discussing about a crow outline. What do you call that? I call it blood, detective. I suppose you'll write it up as graffiti. Or that one scene where he's entering the pawn shop bursting through the door. Suddenly I heard a tapping as of someone gently rapping, ramping at my chamber door. Or that other scene where the mother's drugs were seeping out of her arms. Mother is a name for God in the lips and hearts of all children. Do you understand? I wish I can go through the whole movie, but instead I'll just advise to give it a watch and give the album a listen as well. differently is that I will put a board on the counter now the reason for doing this is when I iron the piece is not moving all around um, I don't know what type of material my desk is made out of but evidently it's very slippery so when I try ironing on it the piece ends up just kind of sliding all over the place but uh, one day when I was doing a project I just kind of forgot I had it on the board and was ironing and I just realized that it stayed in place, so I've been doing it ever since then. On a quick note, for some reason my iron was acting up and evidently it just wasn't heating up anymore, so I had to replace it and get myself a new one. Believe it or not, it looks just like the same one. Now we're gonna dive into a different world of perlers, which is the mini beads. And with that brings the mini boards. Wait a minute. That's too far out. Let's fix that real quick and zoom in right about there. That works out good. Now, these types of beads are a whole different beast to tangle with. For starters, I can't even use my regular tweezers. I have to use these uh, super pointy ones because the holes are just way too small to grip them. And these are the mini beads, folks. They look like sprinkles that you put on a cupcake or something. But yeah, they're that tiny, way tinier than my normal ones. Now, in the beginning, I mentioned that we were gonna be doing a plaque. So, right here, what we're working on is uh, that little symbol that's on the cover, which is the bird ink block test. Um, what I had in mind, and I should have told you this in the beginning, is I wanted to do Brandon Lee with the bird symbol, the crow font, and put it all together. Plus, at the same time, I'm gonna be decorating the canvas as well that it's gonna go on. Now, in case you're wondering what the bird ink block test looks like, it's this one that I'm referring to. So the plan is to make the ink block bird and the crow font out of mini beads. And we're going to put that all together with uh, Brandon Lee's portrait. We're basically going to be making a mural plaque. And just to reiterate, all this was done using that app Perler Pop, which again helped out tremendously in uh, redesigning the pictures that I used.
thing I do want to mention to you folks is that ironing is also a different method. Uh, I feel as though you need to have the iron a little bit lower than normal and you do kind of you know take it easy with it because they melt pretty quick and if you're not paying attention they'll melt on you pretty fast now here's is where we're gonna dive into doing the font of the crow Even with the colors, they look like little confetti specks, like little yummy candies, but don't eat them. Just to reiterate about the size of these things, I want to show you a quick reference as to the size difference of this. Check this out. Here you have the tiny mini, come on guy, focus, 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 oh there we go. But here we have the tiny mini bead and here we have the regular bead come up up there look you kind of get an idea what size difference we're dealing with here so yeah it's a bit tedious when you're working with these little guys big different project Remember, low heat than normal, keep your eye on the project, and so help me, do not press down on this because let's just say you're not going to like it. Trial and error. Once everything has cooled, go ahead and do a visual inspection. Uh, like I said, when I iron my piece work, I like to iron both sides just to make it extra sturdy. And also at the same time, you want to make sure that there's no odd looking beads. before setting up everything with glue always do a pre-setup just so you have an idea how it's going to look you never want to be in a situation where you glue everything down or you have glue on there and you're just kind of figuring out where it goes now this is the canvas that i worked on off camera uh, basically it's just a water droplets effect with some spray cans that i used and 
you know it's not very tedious or hard to do but it's something that I picked up off of a channel maybe uh, maybe I'll share that with you later on down the line but it looks pretty neat so we're pretty much gonna get our hot glue gun and we're gonna just start gluing everything the way it should be By the way, just to kind of give it that uh, 3D effect with the font, I went ahead and put a couple of beads behind it just to kind of lift it up off the board. I don't know, just for it to stand out. And like I said, just set up everything how you would want it to look right before you glue and go ahead and just start gluing away. for with font and decorative canvas that I made overall I enjoyed doing this piece I had fun reliving my childhood movie as always don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and thanks for watching mm -hmm.